Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm your friend Inside XO. In the last video, we have talked about、uh, the theory part of of neural machine translation with attention. Now we are going to make it real. First, we have to find the source code on the GitHub. To do that, all you have to do is use this link. And in your directory, do something like this. Once they are settled, you'll get something like this. Now we got the IPYNB, the notebook available in our local directory. I could open it with this command. Sometimes you have to copy this link and open it. By yourself, only in this way it could be able to work. All right, now I'm in. Trust me, we will have to run this one by one. For every part of the the code, we have to do it. We have to also download the datasets. It seems like we don't have to care a lot. All we have to do is run it one by one, and it just worked by by now. Oh, it is said translate is not defined, so this was not run. Oh yeah, maybe we should look at the above code to find out where it got wrong. Sure, here it got wrong. Tensor object has no attribute lampi. How it was able to happen? It seems like this is a training process. And we got one in here. Tensor object has no attribute lampi. So according to、uh, this problem, I'm going to restart and run all. Oh yeah, we got the same problem. The tensor object has no attribute lampi. So this may get me get us a lot of trouble. So what I'm going to do about this? I guess I'll have to spend some time to change my TensorFlow to TensorFlow 2.0, and I hope it will work after I fix that. Okay, problem solved. All you have to do is add tf that enable eager execution to solve that problem, as I did here. But after that, I got a new problem. As you could see here, two road arrows found resource exhausted ZLN when a collecting tensor with shape of this, and type float on this, whatever. It may cost by my two GB RGB RPG shape. So what I'm going to do about this is to run all those codes in Google Colab. So just forget about the local stuff. We don't need that. We can run all those codes on the cloud. Thanks to the Google company. Okay, here we go. Can we just run all instead of run it by ourselves by hand? Yes, we can do that. After collect the 
run all button. It will literally run all those codes by itself. And it just worked. As you can see here, the first approach of our training. But it may take a lot of time. But we can wait. It doesn't matter. So if anything goes well, I'll be doing my coding at the Google Lab. Oh yeah, after a while, the loss are Degrees to the zero, almost zero, and and we could see the the final result. It's it's just something like this. Good, at least it shows us it works. This code works. So in the next step, what we are going to do is change the data set from Spanish to English to Chinese to Chinese. I mean we. We'll have to do something about it. We will try to find a way to process the Chinese because in the final project, in the fin, I have a final goal to process the Chinese to Chinese. It's a Chinese sentence to a Chinese sentence project. Well, we will get there soon. Before we ever start any coding, I want to mention you guys. You can use a VIM for the editor. Okay, now we have the VIM support supported. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is change this link to another dataset, the Chinese to English dataset. Okay, it's something like this, and then we're gonna change the land or not? No, we don't have to change the land. Is that right? No, we will have to change the land. For example, we have to change this to C M N to English, and also change this to C M N to English. Okay, here we have to change this to CMI, CMN. Right, let's run this. Hope it will work. Okay, we got wrong here. The TF is not defined. We have to import all those things first. Then do this again. Okay, we got it wrong. Ah, uh, it's forbidden. We cannot download it from from this link directly. So I'll do something else. For example, I'll just download it from the network. Then get it and put it into my Google Driver. Or maybe we can do something else. Just put the txt file to our Google driver. Like I did here. So instead of using this command to download the file from the internet, we will just do something like this. I don't know if this works, so I'm going to uh, check it out. Import OS, then OS that uh, last uh, dir. I'm going to make sure that we have that file available. Well, we don't have it. So how do I suppose to to get that file? from my notebook.
Well, you can simply do this. Mount your driver. I will absolutely do that. Okay, now we are in. So what I'm going to do next is to check out the folder. Content driver drive. Okay, we got all those things. My drive. Here we go, almost there, almost done. So we will just have to copy this and paste it here. Done. That's our file. Then we define the function and see how it works. Well, something was wrong in here or not. I don't know. Too many values to unpack expected to. Well, we can have a look in this. Um, okay, first we, we will have a look at this. Print the lines, the first line. And then stop at it. Okay, the same line, the first line is something like this. It's wrong. I must admit that my network access is quite awful. Sometimes disgusting. It's definitely disgusting. You know what, it just reminds me one thing that you have to save this every time when you have that, that chance or you may somehow lose all your work, it's not good. Fine, I found out why I cannot open that file or maybe uh, change that file on my local directory. Okay, it seems like in every line, almost in every line, they got that uh, scene here. So how I'm gonna do about it? What is that symbol? We couldn't have a clue about that. We should never use the exact here. So what am I going to do here? Okay, finally it, it worked out. I just added the this to get the first item, first two items of that sentence. No, we a minute. Something was wrong with this. The high is not right. 
Okay, it should be a uh, spider by this symbol. Okay, still wrong here. What's going on in here? Open it with UTF-8. Should be wrong here. Where pat? Process sentence. Oh, I got it. Uh, here is what's get wrong. Proce pre process sentence. We should change it to something else. At the first, the Unicode will not be changed. Then, we have to change this. Okay, it seems like we just swapped it out. First, we have to, uh, yeah, we have to edit this. No, it's not working. We should never do that. First, we have to disable the unicorn to this. Then, we have to edit this. This is a Chinese um, range. Okay, so by doing that, uh, we will be able to remain the Chinese word. Okay, now let's do it again. So far, so good. I'm going to save this file. Then keep doing this. Now, all we have to do is wait. Wait the training over. Alright, it's finished. Let's see the result. We will have to change this a little bit. We're going to change it to high. See what will happen next. Oh. That's wrong here. So I'm going to change it to 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 Chinese Chinese words. Wow! It just translated that Chinese words to hi. How about this? 你好，朋友们。Oh my god, something was wrong here. Keyword error, 朋友们 So, they don't have that、uh, key at all. So, what do we do? 早安 Wow, I love hand to hide. It's a wrong translation, but I don't know. Let's try it again. 再见 Ah,、oh, we got the translation. See you around. So it seems like it works as long as、um, we are using some words that、uh, they said before. I mean, the dad said got that word. Yeah, that's it. And and and、uh, I guess there's still some problem in the code by now because. I have noticed that、uh, in here the Chinese words are just one single sentence are corresponding to a index. It's not right. As you can see, the English words every word has a corresponding index, but the Chinese words haven't it. So what's the problem? The the main problem is we haven't do any splat splashing to. Split the Chinese words from the sentence, so that's a problem. I may have to fix that later. You know what? According to the situation, I may have to use a Chinese library,、uh, which is Java, to do that job for me. Let's first import it. See if it's if it's there. Okay, it's there. So, um, wait a minute. We will be using this line of code. Let's copy it. Then we have to change 
uh, no, we have to do something after after this. So for every element or for every sentence in the Spanish or to be specific in the Chinese list, we will do something like this. Okay, it will call that uh, sentence to words and it will return it. But before it does that, so I'm going to define a new list CN. All right, CN, CN, of course, CN. Um, I'm going to add it to the CN. Append, append this file. To CN, but before we open it, we shall pre-processing that. So pre-process sentence and with this. Okay. After that, we will show the CN words. But before that, I'm not sure if we do, should do that. So I would say SP equal to CN. Fine. Yeah, that's what we got. Now let's do it again. Doing all those process again. Yeah, something was wrong here. Um, the talking nicer, right? So it should be. I uh, should have another splatter. You should define the splatter. We the, the default will equal to norm. Then we have to say if the splatter, I don't know how to call it. Okay, splat. If the splat uh, equal to norm, then we will do this. Otherwise, we do something else. As far as I say, it's um, we'll just call it split will be equal to space. Okay. So we should also change this to split. Right. So in here for the for the input uh, tensor, we should say the split will be equal to this space. Okay, let's do that. So far, so good. No, tokenizer got an unexpected keyword argument split. Well, we did something wrong here. Split. Let's okay. Wait, why this is a scene? Shouldn't be. Shouldn't be this. So I have to check it out. I'm going to print out the SP. The, for the last uh, five elements, I'm going to say it. Nothing wrong about that. Guess it's it's fine. Oh, I don't know where is the problem. I don't really get it. I may have to check it carefully. Okay. After a little bit uh, re-engineering all those code, now it seems to be work. As you can see here, we also got the Chinese words well indexed. So now 
what I'm going to do is keep running all of those codes until we get the training process. I must say that it really takes a lot of time. It's like almost uh, two minutes have passed. But in the end, everything pays. Now, if we translate the uh, the Zaijian, it will translate that Chinese words into goodbye. It seems to be right. Okay, okay now I'm going to change it to something else. For example, 我是好人 Uh-oh. It seems like something was wrong. How about this? No, still wrong. Does it mean that we have to to separate the Chinese sentence to words before we give it to the prediction function? Predict function. I think yeah, probably. So we will change the translate function here. Okay, after that, uh, I did the translate again and it issues I am good. Okay, that's fine. So let's do it again. 你是我的朋友. Let's say what is God. Well, well, where it goes wrong? I cannot see the. Oh, yeah, it's, it's there. You are my friend, you are my friend. It's the exact sentence that we should be getting if we translate 你是我的朋友. Okay, now let's do something else. 整个世界都是我们的. We should say this. That's the word I think. No, it's not right. Um... Let's change it again. 我们还年轻. Let's say what we will get. We are not a single talk. No, it's not right. <sighs> Let's do it again. Oh yeah, 今天是个好日子. Today is a good day. That's, that seems pretty good at this level because we haven't trained it that much. We only spend almost two minutes to do that training. So, uh, so far so good. At least we know that the Chinese to English work, tra translation was work. Okay. So that's today's video. I will see you in the next one. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how to make a how, how to um how to build your own dataset and use it to uh do some some work on this model. Make it useful again, not only translation, right? So that's it. Goodbye.